what small creators make, like myself. And let me tell you, I make some of your favorite creators don't like paying their editors. editors. Yo, yo, my name is Kaylee. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are doing a q and I'm very excited because I haven't done a QA and a in a long time. And if you haven't seen my last Q&A, go check it out. Also, excuse my voice. I'm under the weather and yes. Oh, okay. I got my mint tea right here. Sorry about no video last week. Um, was definitely not doing the best. But we are here now. And cheers. Look at this mustache mug. Wow. You see? Do you see that? Do you see it? So if you don't know who I am, my name is Kaylee. I am a 23-year-old YouTuber and video editor. I edit for creators. I make my own YouTube videos. And I am me. <laughs> There's a lot of questions that you guys asked me that had to do with me being an editor, with me being a small YouTuber, small creator. And so I'm gonna answer that, um, spilling some tea because I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say about the topic. You know what I'm saying? Don't say. Oh, so let's get started before my back starts hurting because yes. First question, we're just we're just getting right into it. Do you ever see yourself working a conventional job or is editing and YouTube it for now? So that's actually a really good question because the other day I was actually looking at jobs where I could still be an editor, but more of a full-time salary-based benefit job because right now what i'm really mostly struggling with is knowing that in two years when i turn 26 i will be flinged right off <laughs> in two years when i turn 26 i will be kicked off my parents insurance and if i don't have a full-time job that has benefits i will be paying for insurance out of pocket like health insurance I, I, like I, it's just it wakes me i it's what i think about before i go to bed my parents are constantly on me about it so i'm just like maybe it would be better to get a conventional job just simply for the benefits also i think i mean i think i'll get it more into it later the one thing i am truly struggling with is knowing when to say no and when to turn off i am working like 12 to 15 hour days i work in the morning the afternoon the night the middle of the night it's really hard for me to say no so having a regular job that has, a, has nine to five hours could probably help me a lot so to answer your question maybe a conventional job in the future how do you find i don't know how to say that how do you find slash develop self-discipline to be an editor and get projects in on time so to answer this simply money the number one force that drives me in my life is money that is what makes me self-disciplined i do love editing it is such a wonderful creative outlet job that the best one i could possibly have but the best thing about it is if i say yes to a job i know i will get paid except you know these days lately some of your faves not to be shady but some of your favorite creators don't like paying their editors. Yeah, so I've definitely run into problems. Like I tweeted something the other day along the lines of, it really makes me question my worth and it makes me really upset when I have to beg people to pay me. And that is a very large problem, I think, in the YouTube influencer community. People don't wanna pay their artists. They don't wanna pay their editors. It's just like, can you get the work done? Yes or no? And like, I'll say yes and I'll do all the work, but it takes me forever to get paid. And that is something that I'm struggling with a lot. I think because this this whole editing thing to me is so new. I think I struggle a lot with demanding. I read something or maybe my therapist told me this. I don't know. Don't really see a lot of money the first three years that you are creating a business. Don't get me wrong. There are creators out there who are more than nice, give me plenty of enough time, tip me. There are so many creators that are just so great, but there are also some that I have to constantly remind and constantly ask to pay me but sometimes i really don't know how to say no like i'm constantly saying yes to projects for example yesterday i had a really terrible day like it was probably the worst mental state i had been in when it came to being an editor i was sitting there i was doing a project for somebody and then all of a sudden i look up close my laptop and i just say i quit I'm done. I basically texted my client, was like, it's full transparency. I have nothing else to give for the day. I was so incredibly burnt out that it was like 6.30. I had been working all day, all night the night before, and I just didn't finish a project. And that is so unlike me. It is like truly the one thing I'm good at 
And the fact that I didn't finish it, I felt so guilty. But at that moment, I literally just closed my laptop and just laid on the couch for the rest of the night. So I was so burnt out, so bitter about not finishing it, exhausted. I think I have too much discipline. It's so hard for me to say no, especially when people are paying me and I'm on other people's times. People love when editors are fast and able to do their jobs very quickly. Having a quick turnaround time is something that most creators love. Like they love when you can get a video out really, really quickly when you can edit one and have it be done, ready to upload. That's sort of why I say yes to everything because I know they need something and they're relying on me and I have a hard time. It's just a whole thing. I just have a hard time saying no. And I had a conversation with my roommate and her mom today actually about sort of creating boundaries with my career having a relationship with my career that is healthy treating it like a nine to five and not a 5 a.m. to midnight you know type of deal why did you start editing okay so like I said earlier money but also because I was very confident in my ability to be able to edit for others I have like 10 years of experience I've been editing videos since I was literally like 12 or 13 years old like I said I needed money very badly I'm broke, bitch. It really all started when I moved out of my parents' house in August. This is like when the editing freelance career, whatever you want to call it, took off. It's really because I needed the money. I also knew I wasn't really good at many other things and I was really good at this. So I really wanted to take the skills that I had and be able to help other creators. What's something you've learned about yourself this year? This is a really good question. I learned that I am very much capable to do things that I thought I wasn't capable of doing. Oh, but no. It itches. Constantly proving to myself that I can do X, Y, and Z. Looking back at the year that I've had, I've accomplished a lot. And I don't give myself enough credit for that. And this is something I talk about in therapy a lot. Is like I'm always, I'm like very much thinking about what I haven't done and what I can accomplish opposed to what I've already done. So I'm really trying to take a pause and really teach myself how to be appreciative of the things that I've done as life moves on. Just like constantly being grateful for myself, I guess you could say. What I've learned is that I can do anything I put my mind to and I've never had that type of confidence ever in my life. I think what really allowed me to accomplish that was the second half of the year I basically had to sell the out of myself every time I wanted to work with somebody. Basically the way that I would reach out was I would send like a million emails a week basically bragging on myself and saying what I can do for you like sending emails to creators saying how I can edit for you what I can do for you and that really I think like just Doing that over and over and over and over again, just sending a million emails out, it really um, solidified that in me and it really made me believe it. I basically was just eating my own ass in all these emails saying like how great I am, what I can do, what I can do for you, how I can make your life easier. And honestly, I think that's what did it. I think that's what made me believe in myself a lot. How do you cope with loneliness? Something that helped me a lot, stepping outside of myself and being able to see me as another person opposed to me seeing me as myself. If that makes any sense in therapy, in the beginning when we were really digging Digging deep and getting to like the meat and potatoes of all my issues. The meat and potatoes of my issues. Uh, soups on, ding, 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 ding. You know, and you start to sort of treat yourself like a human being, which a lot of us don't. We treat ourselves like garbage. We don't take care of ourselves. I think that's when you can start to really find comfort in loneliness. I definitely love being alone. I've gone through phases in my life where I've needed to fill my life with people in order to not have to deal with myself. And you just gotta be able to find that within yourself and be okay with being your own best friend. I am interested in editing in my future and I just wanna know your top tip. Know your editor like the back of your hand. It takes a lot of experience to like wanna be a freelancer. You have to be able to constantly deliver, spend hours upon hours practicing, taking like a lot of B-roll, like just going outside, filming a bunch of shit, going back and editing it. That's what I did for like the first 10 years of my life. And it really helped because now I can edit anything someone gives me. Obviously besides like animations and stuff because a bitch don't know how to do that. Do you ever see yourself moving somewhere out of Atlanta? So if you don't know, born and raised in Atlanta, currently live in Atlanta. I'm within reach to 
many of my loved ones. I've actually thought about this a lot. Um, I was talking to my friend Courtney. She was saying, you know, I don't see myself living here and you should like consider like maybe moving somewhere else. And I like thought about it for a while. And there are times when I'm like, what would happen if I just like packed my bags and like moved somewhere else? Atlanta is comfort and Atlanta is home. So I really don't see myself living anywhere else. Like I want to buy a house here. I want to start a family here. Like I know the exact area I want to buy a house. Like I love where I live now. The film industry has made so much money for the city and all over my neighborhood, they just like film. It like gets me going. It gets me just like, yeah, film it. How do you keep such a consistent posting schedule and come up with original video ideas? Oh. I don't. I am consistent sometimes. It's so hard and there's an immense amount of pressure to <laughs> to keep original content going and be consistent because if you're not consistent, you just will be forgotten. And I know that's like the harsh, scary reality of YouTube and whatever the f this whole industry is, but that's just what it is. You just have to constantly keep moving and that can lead to a lot of depression and loneliness and sadness. Um, so being a YouTuber is a lot of fun. <laughs> How are you really doing? That is so sweet. I am okay. I'm gonna say that. I'm not great, but I'm okay. Yesterday was a really hard day mentally, but I'm working on it. I am struggling now, but I will be okay. Who was your Spotify top artist for 2019? So let me tell you that my dad, shout out to my father for completely my Spotify wrapped for a month. I let him use my Spotify because I'm a good adult, good adult human child to him. And I said, You can use my Spotify because he was saying he owns a restaurant, uh, Lebanese cuisine. He likes to play Arabic music throughout the restaurant. And he was saying how he can't find like a good streaming service because he's he is so foreign, you guys. I felt bad for him and I let him use my Spotify. And for a whole month, all day, every day, he would stream Arabic music and that completely messed up my rap. My most listened to artist was some Arabic artist. I have no clue who it is. Let me tell you, make no mistake, I won't do it again. Do you think that your body doesn't allow you to do things you want to do? 100%. Growing up, oh my God, growing up, there were times when I didn't think, when I was younger, I very much tied my self-worth and my abilities to do things to my weight. I was like, well, I'm fat, I can't do this, I can't do that. Oh my God, just toxicity. There were definitely people that discriminated against me and my body growing up, but it was I who stopped myself from doing things before I even gave myself a chance to try. I'm the one who told myself, no, you can't go after that because you're this, your body looks like this. And I just allowed myself to think there wasn't even a chance because I saw the way people looked at me and treated me. I completely did myself no favor back then and there is this quote that I do want to say from Euphoria the TV show there's nothing more powerful than a fat girl who doesn't give a f and that is so true if I just didn't give a f and I told myself I could I saw people treating me differently than skinny people that I didn't even bother advocating for myself because I felt like I wasn't worth it because everyone else thought saw that I wasn't worth it it is really hard for bigger people especially bigger women bigger women of color to get things done but you ultimately have to make room for yourself no one's going to push out of the way, especially like I said, for bigger people, bigger women. And you just, you just gotta go for it, regardless if you think you're gonna fail. Someone asked, would you ever consider teaching for a charge? How to be a baller YouTube editor like yo? Well, I mean, not to sound like a bitch, cause this is gonna sound bitchy, but no one helped me. No one like guided me. I am like 100% self-taught. A lot of struggles, a lot of YouTube video tutorials, and a lot of finding my own style for years had to happen before I really like learned um I had this one situation where mm. do they watch my videos though I don't think they watch my videos this was like months ago this is like right when I first started this person hired me to do some editing I did a project for them it was like a it was like a hefty project it was like a couple hundred dollar project and back then it was like the first time I had really made like a chunk of money off of a project. And this person took three weeks to pay me. And every time I would ask him about it, I'd be like, okay, like tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gonna pay you. I promise I'm gonna pay you. And would just give me excuses. And like, I would go on their Instagram stories and see them shopping. Then I finally like sort of had to threaten them. And so this person finally pays me the money. But like, it was really like, 
and like well i guess i'll pay you now even though i really don't have like you know like but she's like really like oh, i guess like like making it seem like i was inconveniencing them like i swear to god like sometimes people are so excited to work with you and then you send them the invoice and then they're just like whoa finally paid me was not happy about it and then never hired me again never heard from them to those people again then the next video that they came out with i watched it and it was literally mimicking my exact style of editing like tried to do everything that i had done in the previous project like down to the same fonts the same the same like uh like subtitle fonts and everything and i was just like you sneaky bitch i mean i guess it's like up to them how they want to edit while i do have a, a, a kind of like a distinct style but i just found that funny how their videos were not like how i edited and then they were like that bitch i'm not paying her again and then try to change up their whole videos by trying to edit like mine it's just there's an issue of people not paying me on time and sometimes like i have to be firm with people and then they'll be like okay fine but it's like well where where was that um where was that quickness of trying to pay me when i first hated do the project why did i have to um be stern with you over email you know what i mean so it's just like one of those things where I'm learning and I'm growing and as as my business grows, I grow as well. And so that's just how it all crumbles down. Someone asked me how much I get paid from YouTube and what small creators make like myself. And let me tell you, I make nothing. In the beginning, I made like $1,300 like a month and it was like so solid. And then as my channel started to plateau, it went from like $400 to like 85. You have to meet a threshold of $100, that's how you get paid. So sometimes I wouldn't even meet the threshold and I wouldn't even get paid. Like last month was a really good month. My channel like had a little bit of a, little bit of a bump or I'll get like a couple hundred dollars this month. I don't get paid anything compared to what I make every, every month doing freelance editing like it's so disappointing how little I make and the end goal though for me, like I want to make a living off of just doing my brand, my YouTube videos, my like managing my own channel. It's just, it's so disheartening sometimes. And I've sort of made my peace with the algorithm and you know, making my money elsewhere. But it sometimes just is such a stab in my chest when I see that I've hardly made anything, when I've put so much time and energy and money into making YouTube videos. Now that I have an income coming elsewhere, it's, it's gotten like a little bit easier and I've been able to enjoy video making videos again. Um, just cause in the beginning I was so stressed about like if I didn't post, I wouldn't make money. Like I said, one day I wanna be there, one day I wanna make all my money from YouTube and brand deals, but I get no brand deals. I think that's all I'm gonna talk about for this video. Thank you so much for watching if you watch till the end. If you like these conversations, I have a podcast called Deep Fried and we upload episodes every Wednesday. Make sure to stream it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Make sure to follow me on all my social medias just to keep updated with me. And just remember to be kind to people. Everyone's going through some damn shit these days, especially during the holidays. Holidays are the saddest time. Suicide rates are up. I don't know how to exit this. Bye. Bye. My back hurts. Peace.